So at the end of last lecture, we start talking about this propagator. So, um, so in non relativistic quantum mechanics, in the Heisenberg picture, we can introduce this position eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue of the position uh, operator at time t with eigenvalue x. Okay. And then from this object, you can construct a propagator. So this object is powerful if you know how to compute this object. Because if you know the wave function at t, y, at t prime, and then, then by, com yeah, by uh, uh, just integrate it uh, 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 with this object, and then you can find your wave function at a later time. Okay. And so uh, uh, this is a powerful object say, in non-relativistic quantum mechanics. So now we can ask what are the uh, analogous objects, say, whether they exist analogous object in free theory, or uh, uh, in field theory. So, but in QFT, there's no natural way to define a localized state okay um uh, uh such as so there's no counterpart of this object okay so one reason is that now there's no position operator anymore so remember now x is actually a label no longer uh, 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 no longer a uh, 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 operator Okay, it's the phi is the operator. X is just a label. So there's no, uh, uh, in quantum field theory, uh, uh, there's no position operator. So you cannot, and then you cannot define, yeah, so the, no position operator, then you can no that no way to define, say, an uh, eigenvector, say, associated with, uh, uh, yeah, localized state. And there's also a fundamental barrier uh, 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 there's a, fu a, a fundamental uh, a contradiction with Lorentz symmetry, okay? So there's also a fundamental barrier, fundamental obstruction from Lorentz symmetry. Okay, so you can show, you can show that uh, localized, you can show a localized state in space is not Lorentz covariant. Okay, so this does not. So, so suppose, yeah, uh, you can uh, do this by by uh, proof by contradiction. Say, so suppose they exist. There exist states like some states. Say x t. So by definition, a local st nice state should satisfy in, uh, 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 if you evaluate them at the same time, okay, uh, 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 then that should be proportional to data function. Okay, because that's by definition what it means, what we mean by a localized state, okay, to localize at the point. And, uh, uh, and that's the property satisfied by this. If you set t prime equal to t, and then this will be a delta function, okay? 
But now, suppose you can uh, define such a state, but then this notion cannot be covariant defined is because this is not a covariant object. So the three-dimensional spatial delta function it does not transform nicely uh, under Lorentz transformation. Okay, and uh, so you can show that if you act, say, say suppose u lambda is the unitary operator generate generating a Lorentz transformation, which we discussed last time. Okay, if you have the uh, the momentum. Uh, 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 if you have the um, yeah, uh, 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 general Lorentz transformation, and then you can show that the u lambda acting on x and t is not the same as the uh, 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 lambda x and the lambda t. Okay, so lambda x and lambda t denotes the Lorentz transformation of this vector. Okay, yeah, uh, uh, here I'm using a short hand notation, uh, a short hand notation. Uh, 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 so lambda x means the Lorentz transformation act on x, and here means the Lorentz transformation act on t. Okay. And uh, uh, you, uh, uh, you actually will do this explicitly in your p set. Okay, you will check this explicitly. Uh, 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 this does not transform. So I'd, so this cannot be a covariant concept. So that means that the uh, you can the most defined in some frame. Uh, but if you change your frame, and then and then this state is no longer localized. Okay, so so uh, so this concept is not the uh, Lorentz. Uh, it's not compatible with Lorentz symmetry. So the closest analog we can define in field theory. Closest, sorry, uh, not closed. Closest analog in QFT in field theory is this object. Okay. So let's define a, 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 a object X to be defined by. So again, whenever I write something like X, you should view view this as a shorthand for the full vector. Okay, including both space and time. Okay. And so this. So I can define object by this by uh, acting. Yeah, let's just consider. Say, suppose we have a real scalar field theory. Okay, so for example, let's just consider real scalar field theory. So we can define object like this. So this is the closest we can get into a, a position eigenstate. Okay, and uh, so uh, and then yeah, it's conjugate. Then it's given by phi. So phi is a Hermitian because it's real. So it's a Hermitian operator. So now you can check this object by definition because phi is a scalar field which transforms nicely under Lorentz transformation. And the, uh, and the, uh, the vacuum is invariant under Lorentz transformation. And so, uh, so this object actually transforms nicely. So under Lorentz transformation, x actually goes to lambda x. OK, so, uh, so this object uh, actually transforms nicely. Okay, but you can also ask what is the overlap between these two such kind of uh, a position eigenstate if we call this uh, coated position eigenstate. Okay, so so now let's consider the overlap between two such states. Okay, and then this will be given by by uh, from this definition will be given by zero phi x and the phi x prime. On zero. Okay. So it's given by uh, 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 the expectation value of phi x times phi x prime uh, between the uh, between the vacuum states. Okay, uh, just from the definition. So the reason we say this is a closed analog is because even though this state is Lorentz covariant, but this state is not localized. So if you have a, uh, uh, if you want a state to be localized, this has to be proportional to delta function, okay? Uh, 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 when you take the them at the same time. But now you can show. Uh, uh, so this is object we can compute explicitly, because we already uh, solved the phi uh, completely, 
uh, in terms of A and A dagger, you can just plug in here to compute this object explicitly. Uh, and we will do uh, 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 towards the end of today, uh, towards the end of today's lecture. Here, let me just tell you the results. So you can see that this guy actually is non-zero for t equal to t prime and x not a equal to x prime. Okay. So that means this is not a lot. Uh, uh, this means that this cannot be a data function. Okay. So so when you uh, evaluate them at the same time, if it's a localized state, then it should be proportional to data function. Uh, uh, but this is not the case. Okay. So so this object is not quite localized, but we will see actually it, it, in some sense it's localized, and we will see in what sense uh, 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 later when we compute this object explicitly. Okay. So, uh, so uh, uh, right now, let's just say the conclusion that this, can, uh, uh, this is not localized. So this is not, so this means this is not a localized state. Okay? Good. So, so heuristically, we can say, um, yeah. Uh, 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 so, so let me just make a, 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 a side remark here. So, if we, so as we say, this is not, uh, not a position I can say, but if we. Say treat it as some kind of approximation, okay, to the position eigenstate, and then we can talk about the wave function uh, 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 of a particle, okay. So now let's suppose, so given a single particle state, psi. So psi would be say some kind of superposition. Uh, uh, which we wrote last time, say, say some arbitrary superposition of the single particle state, okay, if you integrate over the momentum. And then we can define, then we can define its wave function. So I put this wave function as a code as psi x equal to just overlap between the psi and this x object, okay? And then this is given by, just from that definition, just given by zero phi x psi. Okay, so, so we can define a, a, a wave function. So this is the closest analog you can define a wave function for particle in the quantum field theory is to use this object, okay. And now you can check, okay, so, so it's a very simple exercise for you to check yourself. So if you, if I just take this to be the pure momentum state, say for example, if I take psi to be the momentum state, pure momentum state of k, remember this notation, k is the, uh, uh, the square root two omega k on this state, okay? So, so this is the pure momentum state. And then if you calculate this object, and then you get then kx, then just become zero, phi x, k. Okay, now you can again, you, you know the explicitly how phi expressed in terms of a and a dagger, uh, and you know how this is ex uh, uh, obtained from from the vacuum by acting a dagger on it, you can just compute this object. So it take a, a, a couple minutes. And you can also just essentially guess the answer, okay? So, so this just gives you the plane wave. Just give you an unshell plane wave. So the, uh, uh, with your energy uh, 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 given by omega k. Okay, so you just get the plane wave wave function. So, so in this sense, it's like a wave function, okay? It makes sense to call it a wave function. Uh, um. Yes? So in this state here, we call this wave function representation. If we take it, you multiply it by its own like complex transpose, is that, are we interpreted as a probability? 
<laughs> yeah, this is the comment I'm going to make now. Yeah, this is a good question. So, so we cannot really, so we cannot, okay, so in general, okay, uh, uh, so psi x prime in general cannot be interpreted, okay. as given the probability. of the particle at x, okay? So, um, so the reason we cannot do that is because this is not, because x is not the genuine position eigenstate, okay? Uh, and also in quantum field theory, we don't really have this, we don't really have this proper sense of talking about uh, uh, the, uh, uh, you cannot really, in general, you cannot separate a single particle with multiple particle, etc. In, in general, in quantum field theory, uh, it, in free theory, you can because, because there's no interaction. Okay, uh, there's no interaction, but uh, but in general, you, you cannot. Anyway, so uh, so uh, so the reason this is a side remark is that this is often used by people, and they just call it a wave function. Uh, 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 <laughs> but you should keep in mind what's the content of this object, okay? And, uh, and it's not something you can actually uh, 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 rigorously define, uh, uh, both mathematically uh, and physically, okay, as a wave function. Any questions on this? Sorry, could you explain how you got e to the negative i? Oh. You just calculate. Oh. Yeah, uh, 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 but it's very easy to see how you get that. Because we remember phi x is, uh, phi x can be expanded in terms of a u plus a dagger u star. And the k is obtained by a dagger acting on zero. Essentially just a and a dagger part and, uh, 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 and give you this object. And a part proportional to u, uh, and uh, uh, that's how you get it. Good. Okay. So, so, so when we compute this object explicitly, you will get a more precise sense. Okay, what this local, uh, 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 what I mean that this is approximation. Okay, uh, uh, you will get a more precise sense. And so, uh, uh, so let's uh, not defer that a little bit uh, because I want to talk about something else first. Good, other questions? Okay, so, so here, so this actually is a very important object. Even forget about this definition, okay? So this object, yeah, let me just write this object again. So this G plus, so this object, zero phi x and phi x prime, zero. So we motivate it. So we motivate it as uh, 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 this, uh, this overlap between these two uh, localized states, these two approximately localized states. But in quantum field theory, actually, this is a very important object. And, uh, and actually, uh, uh, we normally assign a rotation G plus uh, 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 with this object. And uh, so the application of this object, we will not talk too much about it, but in condensed matter, uh, uh, for example, say if phi describes some approximate, uh, uh, some continuum description of a spin system, and then this would be measure uh, the correlation between the spins at different locations, uh, at different locations and different time. Okay, so this is what people call the correlation functions. And so in condensed matter, this actually plays a very important role. Okay, and uh, uh, measures the correlation between different uh, physical objects. And so here, so when x For x and uh, x prime at non-equal time, okay, in general, phi x and phi x prime don't do not commute. 
OK, remember our commutation relation, canonical commutation relation is the phi, phi x and the phi x prime, they commute when they add equal time. OK, when they are not equal time, in general, they, uh, 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 they don't have to commute. OK, so, so the ordering here is actually important. OK, so the ordering of phi in G plus is actually important. OK? So if, so if I define some other, I can considering a lot of objects with a different ordering. Say if I put the phi x prime first, I can also consider this object. Put the phi x prime first. OK? So this is normally called now this is a different function in general because they don't commute and we call it g minus. Okay. Okay, so this is also appropriately just x prime x. Okay, so this is the, uh, the x prime x and this is uh, using that notation is uh, uh, x, uh, x prime. Okay. And uh, 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 so in general, G plus and G minus, they are not the same. So you can also define some other functions. Say, uh, since the phi and the phi, phi x and the phi x prime don't commute, then you say, then, uh, then we can consider more general orderings. OK, we can consider the superposition of these two. OK, so, so, you, uh, uh, um, so you can consider the retarded function, so-called, which is defined to be the theta t minus t prime, the commutator of phi x and the phi x prime. OK, so this is some other, bro uh, uh, other object you can define, which is the difference between the two. But it's only only take a value when t is greater than t prime. Okay, so when t is smaller than t prime, then it's zero. Okay, so these are some other objects we often uh, uh, use, and so this often is denoted by theta t minus t prime, and call this object, this commutator, to be delta t t prime. Okay. So sometimes people also use the following object, the g a equal to minus t t prime minus t. Okay, so, so, so only uh, it's non zero when t prime is greater than t and the delta. Oh, sorry, here it should be x, x prime. Okay. And finally, you can define an object called GF, which is half. So this is called retarded, this is called advanced, which is like half of, uh, retarded and half advanced. So when t greater than t prime, you take the g plus. And uh, when, uh, uh, when t greater than t prime greater than t, let me do it here. You do g minus. OK. Again, this gf is a, a function of x and x prime. OK. So, so because they don't commute, so this is various object you can define, okay? So, uh, uh, one second. So, so at the moment, they, they may seem not very intuitive to you, okay? Why should you be worried about those objects? And later you will see actually uh, 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 some of those objects play a very important role, okay? And uh, 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 some, some of these objects will play a very important role. Um, yeah. Yeah, for now there are just some definitions which we will use potentially later. Yes? Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. If you do them at equal time, then it doesn't matter. But, but remember, x and x prime, they don't have the same time. Uh, and if they're not at the same time, and then actually sometimes the ordering matters. Yeah, 
whether you do this measurement first and then you wait a while to do that measurement, or you do this measurement first and then, yeah, yeah, uh, then that can be different. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just they switched. Yeah, I, I remember the, this order is important. So here, I, I, I have x first and x prime second. So, so this order is different, uh, 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 it's important. Yeah, 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 it is coming up kind of too fast. So. Other question, yeah? Um, yeah, uh, uh, we will talk about that. Uh, we will talk about that. Yeah, 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 uh, um, yeah, yeah. They, uh, they are actually. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. You just say our canonical. Yeah, our canonical commutation relation only requires them to commute uh, uh, at equal time. And when they are not equal time, uh, and each of them will evolve, okay? And be, yeah, be, uh, uh, remember the, uh, the phi itself is some, uh, 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 phi itself depends on time. Yeah, so yeah, let me just, if I just write the, uh, 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 the yeah, let me just write the, uh, uh, so this is dk, say ak, uk plus ak dagger. UK dagger, UK star, okay? So this is my, my expression for phi. So, so canonical commutation relation only requires they, they are equal when, uh, when t equal to t prime. But when t is not equal to t prime, I just have some general expression. I do the commutator, this gar not guarantee you will get a zero. Yeah, you just get, uh, 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 yeah, you have different terms so they may not cancel each other. That t equal to zero, uh, we guarantee that they cancel each other. Uh, but, uh, but when t is not equal to zero, they're not gu uh, guaranteed to cancel each other. But yeah, but we will figure out when, when they cancel, when not cancel. Yeah, uh, we will talk about that uh, uh, more explicitly. Yes. Uh, the differential stack is the point at which like, the greatest integral is so that t in a particular frame y t equals zero. Right, right, right. Yeah, 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 we will talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It doesn't matter because. Yeah, yeah, we will talk about that. Yeah, we will talk about that. Good. Okay, so, so let me just emphasize again, this, this is something in principle you can define, uh, and, uh, uh, and it's uh, uh, some of its meaning will be clear later. And, uh, and in, in the next piece, I love in this piece, in the next piece, you will see an example which this uh, 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 thing actually play a very important role. So this is the analog of the retarded function in your E and M. Do you still remember retarded function E and M? And uh, yeah, so this is the quantum version of this retarded function. Uh, in E and M, okay, and uh, uh, and you will see application of this uh, in the PSAT four, and later we will use this thing all the time, okay. So so this GF we will use it all the time uh, when we consider interactions, and uh, yeah, so that's why we want to introduce it here. And this G plus G minus are called white man functions. So sometimes called the Weizmann functions. The GF is called the Feynman functions. So, so Feynman was the first person who introduced it. Okay. Okay. And uh, yeah, so, so, so G plus G minus uh, 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 was introduced by other people, but Weizmann made many important use of it uh, in early days of quantum field theory. So it's called the Weizmann function. Okay, so now let's just uh, study a little bit the properties of those functions, okay? So you can also think that these are the, essentially the simplest observables of the system, okay? And in particular, if you think of them as correlation functions, and then that just tells you the correlation between the phi at the different points, okay? So this in some sense are also the simplest uh, are, are, are observables in your theory. Good, do you have other questions? Yes. Uh, yeah, this is the correlation in the vacuum state. Yeah. So, so you have like, 
Yeah, yeah, if you write in the vacuum state, of course you get the different function. Yeah, yeah, you can. You can compute. So, so in this theory, we can compute in any state. Yeah, yeah, but just we often uh, uh, use the uh, property in the vacuum state. Other questions? Yeah, for example, in the lab, if you can prepare in some whatever state you prepare, uh, you calculate this object in that state. But the, the vacuum is the simplest one. Yeah, it's the simplest state. Yes. No, no, it's not quite in, uh, uh, in space time. Uh, we will see in what sense it's approximate to the local in space. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Good, now let's just discuss the property of those objects. And uh, um, so, so, So the first thing is that the, remember the phi satisfy the following equation. So this is the operator equation satisfy phi. And so if you act this on, on the, uh, so, uh, so if you, yeah, so suppose this is, uh, uh, so here you have two, here you have two, uh, two arguments, x and x prime. So here, when we write differential operator, we always refer to x, okay? It's always derivative on x, okay? So because phi satisfies this equation, so, so if you act this on those uh, uh, g plus and the g minus, you immediately get zero, okay? So you find, because of phi satisfies equation, then g plus minus, I just uh, x and x prime, immediately give you zero, okay? Just because phi satisfies this equation. Oh, sorry, it should be a minus sign, I think. And similarly with this delta, uh, similarly with delta, so the, uh, so this, so the delta is the difference between the two. It's the commutator. So the delta is essentially the uh, the difference between g plus and g minus. Okay, so the same thing with delta. Okay. So this is the first property is that they satisfy uh, 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 the same equation as the equa uh, classical equations of phi, okay? So, so the g plus and delta, they satisfy, uh, uh, um, yeah. And we will talk, and then you can now also look at the gf and the gr. So, so now if you act this object on GR, GA, or GF, the story is a little bit tricky because the partial square contains time derivatives. And then when you add the time derivative, and time derivative do act on those theta functions. And when you add time derivative on theta function, you will get some delta functions, et cetera, okay? And, uh, and so uh, the story is a little bit more intricate. And, but if you, just carry it through, okay? It, it just carries through, then you can show. And so this is a simple exercise you should try to show yourself, okay? We'll not do it here. That you find, you act this on the G, R, A, and F, okay? You get actually the same, uh, any of them, okay? You get the same equation. You get the right-hand side become it's non-zero, actually give you a delta function. Uh, so this is a four-dimensional delta function. So in both in spatial location and in time, okay?
So heuristically, you can understand that this delta function in time come from taking derivative on theta functions, okay, uh, uh, taking derivative on theta functions. And, uh, and then, and then the uh, uh, derivative in the, uh, 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 in, the, in the spatial direction, or oh, oh, delta function in the spatial direction, uh, it can uh, uh, come out in the following way. So here you have two, so here you have two time derivatives, right, in the partial square. So imagine you have one time derivative acting on, uh, on the theta function, and then give you a delta function in time. And then if you have one time derivative acting on, uh, 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 on this phi, and then turn it into pi. And then, and then equal time commutator then give you a delta function, okay, in the spatial direction. And so that's how you uh, uh, get that, okay? Yeah, but it's easy to check yourself, okay? So, so this is the first property is that they satisfy those nice equations, okay? The second property, uh, uh, yeah, he said phi x and the phi x prime, even though in general they don't commute, but they actually commute for space like separations. Okay, so that means that if you look at the commutator of phi x and the phi x prime, this is actually equal to zero for x minus x prime greater than square greater than zero. Okay, for space-like separations. So this can be checked by explicit computation. So we know the uh, you know the mode expansion of phi. You can just do its commutator. Yeah, uh, you can just check it, right? But but. But you can also, uh, 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 but there's also a simple argument to make it, okay. So, so you can do, you can check by explicit com uh, computation. So here I give you alternative argument. Okay, here I give you an alternative uh, derivation. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's very simple, but, but let me just divide it into three small steps, okay? So, essentially by definition, so let's just consider, yeah, we consider the commutator, uh, uh, which here we call the to be delta, okay? So the delta x plus minus, uh, or x and x prime, which is the commutator, yeah, let me define, yeah, so, uh, sorry, uh, uh, yeah, so delta here is the expectation value of zero, okay, so, uh, uh, so let me call this delta hat, okay, so the delta hat is defined to be the commutator, okay, delta hat to be the commutator. So, so the first claim is that this is actually a C number, okay, so, uh, 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 this is C number, and uh, the reason is very simple. So it's just some uh, uh, some constant. It, uh, even if it's non-zero, can at the most be a constant. It can be some, yeah. But C number means that the uh, 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 it, it's not an operator. Okay. So the reason this is uh, C number is because if you look at the phi, it's linear in A and A dagger. If you look at the commutator between uh, phi and phi itself, you you always just get commutated between A and A dagger. And A and A dagger just give you a constant, okay? So, uh, and so this just, uh, you get some C number. Okay, so, so in fact, uh, so this delta hat is actually the same uh, uh, as delta because the, uh, if you C number, you take expectation value, doesn't do anything. So the second step, he said, now let's consider the, uh, uh, the uh, Lorentz transformation, uh, uh, the, uh, the operator which generates the Lorentz transformation, okay, which is given by, remember, uh, we discussed last time. Okay, so this is the generator, so this is the unitary, uh, so this is operator of Lorentz transformation.
Okay, let's look, uh, uh, look at this object. And then by definition, okay, so this object acting on phi x dagger will give you phi prime x. And phi prime x, uh, a transformed phi under the Lorentz transformation, and this is the same as you just do an inverse uh, uh, a Lorentz transform on the coordinates. Okay, so, so, so this is the. So by the way, just uh, uh, do you feel comfortable about this equation? Do you know where this equation come from? So you're all comfortable with this? Okay, good, okay. So, um, so by definition, uh, you act on phi as this, okay? So now let's just act both, act u and u lambda dagger on both sides of this equation, okay? On, uh, on both sides of this equation. So, and then we get, so on the right hand side, so this is a unitary operator, okay? Because of the M is Hermitian, this is a unitary operator. So the right hand side, you just go back to this C number, does not change, okay? So the equation does not change. And the, uh, the left hand side, so the delta is the same, okay? So, so you find that the, um, yeah. So you find the delta x, x prime, which is equal to this C number, then it's the same as u lambda phi x, phi x prime, and the u lambda dagger, and that gives you me phi lambda minus one x commutator with phi lambda one, uh, minus one x prime. So that's the same as delta lambda x and the lambda x prime, okay? Okay. Good. So now, now we can look at the uh, 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 the last step. So, so you see, when we make a Lorentz transformation on delta, actually nothing changes. Okay, uh, and the value is the same. Okay, uh, uh, because the commutator is a C number. And then, then now remember for any space like separated. x and x prime, we can always choose find some lambda, some Lorentz transformation, okay, that the um, lambda x and the lambda x prime to be at equal time. Okay, they have the same time. Okay, we can always make a transformation. Yeah, uh, 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 and then we call something else t tilde. So, so if the original x is good, uh, 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 you can always tr uh, transform in equal, uh, uh, equal time. And then according to this one, then, uh, then will be identically zero. Okay, and then, and then we find delta x and x prime equal to zero, okay? Okay, because now this is evaluated at the equal time. So this is very intuitive, okay? Intuitive, uh, when you make a Lorentz transformation, you can, uh, um, uh, um, yeah, uh, but this is a precise uh, proof of the statement, okay? Any questions on this? Yes? Sorry? Yeah, for x minus x prime square greater than zero. So, so this is a four distance square. Uh, you're asking about this notation? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is just the their their full distance square. Yeah, the uh, the separation between them. Yes. Yeah. Uh, doesn't that, that, that just like define, that, that says that G is like the, the Green's function for your, yeah. for your fine word calculator? Yeah. So, so why, why does that, is there like an intuition for why the correlator and the vacuum state gives you like the Green's function? Because then you could use this to like get any possible solution. For right. Theory, right, right, right. Um, so, yeah, so the intuition is that essentially, um, yeah, so, yeah, for example, this is just how we, uh, uh, um, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, first is that this kind of thing is uh, simple enough. Uh, essentially, you can just uh, uh, see by observation. Uh, and, uh, uh, but in the more complicated theory, and you can actually derive it, and the retarded uh, 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 green function always have this form. Yeah, so that's a, a follow more elaborated derivation. Right. Right, 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 right. Yeah, 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 this is different, right? So, uh, so classically, we just define those functions using those equations. So here, here we just say uh, uh, in quantum field theory, those objects can be written this way. Yeah, yeah, uh, 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 those objects can be written this way. And, uh, and this definition just follow from the, uh, uh, just follow from standard, yeah, if you do quantum mechanics and you, uh, a retarded, uh, a, a retarded uh, function can always be written like this. Yeah, this is also just in quantum mechanics, but it require a little bit of calculation to see that. Yeah. Other questions? Yes? Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's lambda minus one, yeah. Yeah, so here also should be number minus one. Other questions? Okay, good. Um, yeah, so, so this also shows, yeah, so, so when we talk about the uh, canonical quantization, so we mentioned that we need to impose this equal time commutator to be zero, okay? Uh, uh, and that's our canonical uh, commutation. Yeah, we impose the canonical commutation relation uh, uh, at a single time, uh, 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 at a single time. And some of you were asking that, uh, uh, that actually, uh, uh, does that actually break Lorentz symmetry? Because we have to choose a single time, okay? But now you can see, actually, this does not break Lorentz symmetry because the only space like separated and the commutator is always the same. So, so, so no matter what frame you choose, and the, uh, 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 yeah, in any frame, uh, uh, if it's e equal time, and it's always space like separated in some other frame. Okay. Good. So that means, so immediate conclusion, it means that for space like separated, x and x prime, g plus equal to g minus is equal to gf. Okay, so the time ordering does not matter. So the g plus uh, then equal to g minus, and then then gf equal to the sum of them, and then uh, when here is for t greater than t prime, here is for t prime greater than t, uh, and then uh, then these two just add equal to one, okay? Because these two become the same, okay? And uh, the uh, and the gr and the ga equal to delta equal to zero, okay? For space like separated case, so those uh, functions are pretty simple. So the, uh, um, yeah. So, so now, 
So the last property, now you can show due to the space time, translation symmetry and the Lorentz symmetry. of the vacuum, of the vacuum state, okay? So you can show, again, I think this is, uh, will be, uh, uh, this is a, a pretty simple argument, but I will leave it to show yourself. You can show that any of those functions only depend on the difference between of them. And in particular, only depend on the full distance between them. Okay, and this G here can be any of the GR, GA, G plus, minus, GF, etc. Okay. So, so all of them have very nice properties. Even though naively they depend on two arguments. So X have four components. X prime have four components. So naively this is a function of eight variables. But this tells you once you use all the symmetries, this is actually a function only a single variable. Okay, this is a very powerful statement. Okay, so they have very, yeah, so this answers uh, uh, one of the question uh, 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 some, uh, uh, one of you asked earlier that the, uh, uh, despite the uh, theta functions, uh, you can show that the, uh, they still have very nice properties on the Lorentz transformation. Okay, you can show they have uh, nice properties on the Lorentz transformation. Good. Okay. Other questions? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, so, uh, uh, so this is very easy. Well, you have a translation symmetry, and then, uh, and then the reference point you choose is not, uh, you can choose any point to be the reference point. And so, uh, so you can just choose x, uh, and uh, 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 then, uh, then, only the, then only the separation between x and the x prime matters. Yeah, because you can just choose x prime, for example, to be at the origin, and then, uh, then only the separation. And then, and then uh, the Lorentz symmetry tells you that only the distance matters. Uh, it doesn't matter the direction. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The commutator also have this property. Yeah, the delta. Yeah, the delta also have this property. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. No, no. This is true in general. No, this is true in general. This is always true. Uh, uh, but it's only in the vacuum state. Uh, so the key is that it's, uh, uh, you have to use that the vacuum state are invariant under those transformations. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, once you understand how to do it, it's a very simple argument. So, uh, so that's why I will leave it into one of the uh, uh, exercises. Yeah. Other questions? Okay, good. So now let's compute this object, G plus. Okay, let's compute this object, G plus. Uh, we have been talking about it. And now finally, after discussing all these general properties, so let's compute them explicitly. So, um, so, so let's just first compute the G plus. Did I just erase the definition of G plus? Yeah. So, 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 so this is easy 
to do. So, so those properties you you can just get by symmetries. Okay, of course you can also get by by doing explicit calculations. Okay, but 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 you can get them without doing any explicit calculation, just based on symmetries. So, but here uh, we will do a, a calculate this object explicitly. We will see it satisfy those properties. Okay. So, so we just put in the the expansion of phi and the phi x and the phi x prime. Okay. And uh, uh, and then yeah, then then we have the zero, and then we have a k u k evaluated at x plus a k dagger u k star evaluated at x times a k prime u k prime valued at x prime plus a k prime dagger u k prime star at x prime and the acting on zero. Okay? So so this decay with two omega k and this essentially give you phi uh, and the other one give you the phi, uh, 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 so this give you the phi x and this one uh, give you the phi x prime. Okay, I just uh, uh, calculating this, okay? So now this is easy to do. This is just now become a, a, a exercise in harmonic oscillator. So, so only this term, multiply this term is non-zero. The rest term are zero, okay? Because this will annihilate the vacuum, okay? And this the two a dagger together will annihilate that vacuum, okay? So, so the only term normality is this term uh, uh, combined with this term. So, so you just get, and there's a delta function when you uh, 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 evaluate them between the zero, and so you find. So. K, and then you have exponential m. Okay. Um, T minus T prime. Okay. So, uh, so this is the object. Okay. So uh, we can do this integral further. And let me also uh, rewrite this in a slightly different form. So you can also write this as integrating. So here, omega k is on shell, okay? So I can also write it in this, in a more general form, in the form like this, two pi theta k zero delta k squared plus m squared in exponential i k. So, so in this form, the k is unconstrained, but I have a delta function to, to enforce it on shell, and then I, uh, I put the theta k zero to make it to be positive, okay? And then, and then you can see that this will lead to that, okay? And see this piece of that. And similarly, you can find, okay, similarly, you can find the integral expressions for gr, GA and the GF, I will not uh, 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 give the expression here. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, we will, uh, 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 um, yeah, you can easily find them yourself. So um, let me just make one remark. So you can now actually calculate this object, okay? So now let's calculate this object. Remember earlier we say this is, this object is the overlap between x and x prime, okay? So let's see in what sense this is like a delta function, okay? Uh, uh, this sense is like a delta function uh, uh, when we set them to be equal time, okay? So now uh, note, 
So let's consider the equal time t equal to t prime. Okay. So for t equal to t prime, so uh, the integral become following t plus x and x prime just equal to Okay, it just become this, okay? And this integral clearly is non-zero. Okay, so, so that's why we said earlier this is not a localized state, okay? So, uh, 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 so this is equal to uh, uh, this x and x prime. So this is non-zero and equal to, and so this is not a localized state. And uh, 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 yeah, so this is not a proportional to a delta function, okay? If, uh, the thing is here. If you don't have this factor, then it's a delta function, but, uh, uh, but this one is not. But you can nevertheless, you can calculate this integral exactly. Okay, you can calculate this integral exactly. And also just based on the, uh, uh, here, based on the spherical symmetry, uh, a rotational symmetry, you can immediately see that only depends on the distance between them. Okay, uh, uh, only, yeah, so, so, so this g plus, will only be a g plus or function of r, and r is the distance between the, yeah, just based on symmetry, you can easily convince yourself, and this only depends on the distance between them, and just from the symmetry of the integral, yes? So you yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's for, it's for the, uh, uh, for, for example, for calculating the, um, you want a, a dagger equal to one? Yeah, because, they, because that's the normalization for the a dagger. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, yeah, uh, 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 that, uh, that's a good question. I forgot to mention that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Okay, so, so, so this object at t equal to zero only depends on distance of, uh, between them because this is a spherical integral because uh, this one only depends on the magnitude of k uh, 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 and then this is just a standard Fourier transform. So now you can just evaluate uh, 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 this integral explicitly, okay? You, uh, I urge you to do it yourself and then, we, uh, uh, then you can show this is actually proportional. You can actually evaluate this using Belser function. So this gives you a modified Belser function. Okay, k0 uh, times mr. So do any of you, are any of you expert of Bessel function? So do you know the behavior of this function for, uh, when r is large? Hmm? Uh, it, yeah, that's got to zero, that's a good intuition. But it got to zero in what way? Actually, exponentially. Okay, so you actually proportional to exponential uh, 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 minus mr. Okay, so for r large, for mr greater than one. Okay, now you can see in what sense this is approximately localized state. You see the, this is not zero, but this is pretty small at large distance. So at the distance r is much greater than one over m. So, so when r is much greater than one over m, so that object is very small, so, so this is exponentially small. Okay, so this tells you that even though this is, this is not a perfectly localized state, this is a localized to the distance of one over m, okay? So if these two points are separated more than one over m, and then the overlap become very small, okay? And so this is, yeah, uh, 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 so sometimes we call this uh, 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 psi, okay? And in condensed matter, 
uh, a language which this, uh, you, when you interpret this as a correlation function, which uh, the correlation between the phi x and the phi x prime, and then this is also called the correlation length. Okay, so, so when the phi, the distance beyond one over m, uh, or, or beyond this psi, and then, then the phi no longer correlated, okay? No longer correlated. So, so, so there's a sense this is approximately localized object, and it's, the, it's essentially the Compton wavelength of the particle. Okay, it's the Compton wavelength of the particle. And once you go outside the Compton wavelength of the particle, and then, and then uh, uh, the overlap become very small. Okay, so this makes perfect physical sense, okay? Uh, 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 it makes perfect physical sense. Uh, there was a hand. Yeah, I had a question, but then I realized that my thing was wrong. Okay, okay, good, good. Okay, good. So, um, yeah, so this is just a, a make up what we said earlier. So you can similarly get such kind of integral expression for, uh, uh, for those things. But rather than the coordinate space expression, it's actually often, uh, uh, we often actually need the expression momentum space, okay? So, so often it's there. So often in the future, we'll often need their expressions in momentum space, okay? So, so we can just consider their Fourier transform. So here is the convention of the Fourier transform. So dx, so, so any object or function of x uh, again, this is a four vector and the minus i k x. Okay, so, so I use the same notation g to denote its free transform and distinguish them only by k and x, okay, because uh, it's just annoying to always put some tilde uh, 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 above it, okay. And, uh, and the inverse transformation would be the g x x prime so you see here explicitly, yeah, there we already see explicitly is that it's only the uh, function of their uh, 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 separations. And then if you use the symmetry here further, then you see it's their distances, okay? So we can also just write it in this in terms of the, this is i k x, x minus x prime, g k, okay? Uh, so this is our convention for the free transform. So, so from here, if you just look at this expression and compare with this expression, and then immediately we conclude for this Weitman function g plus, k is just given by two pi theta k zero delta function k squared plus m squared. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so this is expression for the g plus. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is a. Uh, 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 so here, this is in some sense the uncertain principle. This uh, 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 here we just consider in the vacuum state. Uh, so uh, so there's not uh, the state itself does not have any energy. And, uh, and so this is just the Compton wavelength of the, uh, 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 the particle itself. And it's just like a, a static uh, a Compton wavelength. Yeah. Yeah. Other questions? Yes? If it's a vacuum state, then what does it mean? So maybe like, the, for example, the particle can be like, it's just a like vacuum state because they don't have any energy. Yeah, but still you have fluctuations. This is quantum mechanics, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for example, uh, uh, um, yeah. Yeah, for example, if you can calculate an analogous object for the harmonic oscillator, so if you have a harmonic oscillator, the analogous object is this object, and you can also calculate this non-zero, yeah. 
it, it, just because of the fluctuations. Other questions? OK, good. So, so this is the expression uh, 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 um, for, the, for the G plus. And for those objects, we can get the momentum space expression by, uh, by going through the same procedure. OK, just plug them in, label through, and then write the final answer in this four, in, four momentum integral form, and then you just read the answer. OK, and for them, we can do the same thing. But it's actually much easier. Instead of going through that procedure to calculate those quantities, it's actually much easier to start from here. Okay, because they satisfy these equations. Okay, so let me call this stuff. Okay, so, so to find GFK, the similarly GRAK, it's actually easier to use star, okay? Unfortunately, so so now if to look at this equation, if we look at this equation, then let's just free transform on both sides. We do Fourier transform on both sides. So the left hand side, the partial, uh, each derivative just give you a k. Oh, so k, this is the standard rule for Fourier transform. And so you, here you just get k square plus m square. And let me just call it g, okay, so, uh, so denote any of them, equal to minus i. Okay, because the right hand side, when you do a Fourier transform, just become y in the delta function. So now we can immediately write down the expression momentum space okay but now you see we have a problem so what problem do we have yes good good but we have a lot of problems so this is one of the problems. We have a lot of problems. Yes? Hmm? So k is not on shell, right? Because when we do a free transform, when we do a free transform, it's for the general k. Yeah, it's defined for the general k. Yeah, uh, indeed, for the on shell value of k, then you will have a, a singular behavior. And, uh, uh, but, but for the, uh, but we still have a lot of problems. Yes. Is that supposed to be complex? Yeah, it is complex. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That aspect is okay. Yeah. So since we are out of time, I don't. So you see here, we have defined three different functions. Okay. But there, how many solutions we have? We have only one. We have a unique solution. Seems like. Then we have a problem, right? Seems like that seems to say all these three are the same, but but if you calculate them, okay, uh, going through this uh, theta function, exactly, uh, uh, they're not the same. So okay, it turns out these two problems are related, okay. Turns out these two problems are related, because now if you consider the coordinate space expression, which is obtained by the free transform of this guy. Okay, for, okay, given by a Fourier transform of this guy. So, the integ so if you write down explicitly 1 over k square plus, so 1 over k square plus m square, if we write it explicitly, so this is 1 over minus omega square plus k square 
plus m square. Okay, write it explicit. And then this is equal to minus omega square plus omega k square. Okay, so this is just the omega k square. So as you said, this actually have a singularity when omega equal to plus minus omega k when, when you satisfy this unscaled condition. Okay? But this singularity is actually along the integration contour of omega. Okay, because in this full integral, it's given by d omega dk. Okay, so the omega, so this formal infinity plus infinity, and these two singularity are the real value of uh, omega. So they actually, so if you look at omega axis, so at these two points, actually they become singular. Uh, the integrand is, simple, uh, uh, is singular. Okay, so the integral is actually not well defined. Okay, so the uh, so integral is not well defined. So in order to define the integral, okay, in order to define this omega integral, then we have to do your standard trick in complex analysis. So what's that trick? Yes. That's right, to go around the singularity. Okay, so, so now you go to the complex plane, complex omega plane, so now this is a real omega, this is the imaginary omega, you go to the complex omega plane, now the integration counter is along the real axis, and now you have four different choices. You can either going up or going down for each one of them, okay? And then now you have four different choices. And this three equals one into three choices of them. Okay, and then there's a fourth one which is not frequently used, so we normally don't give them a lane, okay? And the fourth one, sometimes we call them GF tilde, okay? It just, uh, uh, anyway, so there are four different choices of going around the singularity, and then that gives you uh, a four possible uh, uh, solutions, okay? And then, uh, and then that gives you the, uh, uh, um, the um, yeah. So now let's talk about the GR, uh, uh, do them one by one. So for GR, so remember GR is defined to be when theta t greater than t prime, GR should be proportional to t minus t prime. So that means this should be zero for t minus t prime smaller than zero. Okay, this should be zero for t minus t prime smaller than zero. So how do we achieve that by going uh, uh, around the poles? So remember in this integral, it's a piece minus, uh, uh, the, the omega dependent piece is minus i omega t minus t prime. So when t minus t prime smaller than zero, if you want to do this integral using counter integration, then you can close, so this is smaller than zero, and then this is positive, and then you can close the counter in the upper half plane. You can close the counter in the upper half plane in order for this to be identically zero, you need your uh, integration counter don't enclose any singularity. So that means for the retarded, you need to go in around the uh, singularity along which direction? We only have one minute left. <laughs> For it to be zero, when you integrate, yeah, so you want to close in the upper half plane. Okay, you want to close it because of the, uh, the t minus t prime is smaller than zero, and then this is positive i, and then omega in the upper half plane, this is a decay exponential. And so, so you want, there's no singularity inside the contour, and then you want to go in around the singularity this way. Okay, going above the uh, singularity. When you're going above the singularity, and then this counter don't include, uh, and then, then we, the within this counter, and then there's no singularity, then this is identically zero from the Cauchy theorem, okay? So it tells you that for the retarded green function, you need the, the uh, 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 counter like that. So similarly, For the advanced, you, because the advanced, you just uh, 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 change the direction. So this is for the retarded. For the advanced, 
is for pointing to t minus t prime, then you just go in the opposite direction. Okay, so this is for the retarded, uh, for the advanced. Okay, and then finally, if you want to do it for the Feynman, and then you choose one of them uh, uh, going up and one of them going down. I always forget which one uh, going up, which one going down. <laughs> yeah, so, 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 so actually this one you go down, but this one you go up. Okay, so this is for the Feynman, for the GF. Okay, okay, yeah, that's all for today.